Camino Diaries Epilogue and Fisterra. I was 20 kilometers into my walk to Fisterra, or Finisterre, that I made the executive decision to cut it short and take the bus for various personal reasons. I love the walk, these four days to the ocean. But sometimes something's got to give, and that is now. It's all right. I've had an incredibly intense and rewarding Camino to Santiago. And maybe adding another icing on the cake may just prove too much. And this also means I can still enjoy the beautiful village of Finisterre which I really, really like. I just walked from the village to the lighthouse, which is the actual end of the world, or the edge of the world, or the end of the walk, depending on your perspective. I was in the deep whirlwind of thoughts and emotions as I was walking up here trying to make some sense of the extraordinary adventure I've just been on. Not with a sense of achievement, but with a deep gratitude for the incredible adventure that I just went through. This will take some time. I'm going to look at my notes here that I took in order to collect some of the thoughts that I had. I'm sitting on a rock near the lighthouse overlooking the ocean. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. There's some wind and some swallows flying around. I had set out on the Camino seeking an internal experience and I received far more than I had bargained for. And although I was unaware of any specific need or issue to work through, the Camino seemed determined to challenge me in ways I had not anticipated. And unraveling the precise nature of these challenges will, without a doubt, take time and introspection. But it's just a walk, you say, albeit a long one. How could a long walk have an impact this massive? Because it does. It's all that time spent simply walking outside for hours each day exposed to the elements, the sun, the wind, the rain, using your body, your mind, using your soul and your heart in the daily rhythmic dance. It takes two to three weeks to really get into the walking swing of things until your body has adjusted and your mind has settled on this new routine. In 
the first two to three weeks were in transition. I was reset not once, but twice, by injury and illness. But these resets, in hindsight, were necessary to really set the right path for my Camino. Someone told me in Leon, after over four days of gastrointestinal misery, your Camino is only starting now. And that proved to be entirely true. It wasn't easy until it was. So though initially challenging, the experience gradually became almost effortless, as if it was a natural state of being. And in this state, the constant barrage of choices that typically paralyzes the mind what to wear, what to do, what to decide on today, faded into insignificance. It just didn't matter. Your focus becomes an entirely different one. Normally you accumulate things. More stuff. And the Camino you don't. On the contrary, you slowly lose them. And it doesn't matter. So you move with less baggage, so what? I'm a news and information junkie, and I thought it would be hard for me to not do the usual. Read everything I can, spend hours on Twitter or X. But to my surprise, I found myself practically offline for five weeks. And the world seemed to carry on just fine without my constant attention. This total immersion in the present moment, this one thing, was a liberating experience. My videos have become so slow that unless there's some motion in the leaves from the wind, you could almost not see there were moving images and not still photos. Like micro expressions in a person's face that we are very able to read. It's these tiny movements that make a difference between a moving and a still image. Now the interesting thing about photographs is just as photos freeze a moment in time, our minds fill in the gaps, interpreting what came before and after the captured instant. So my videos are sometimes in that liminal space between video and photo and that's just fine by me it's getting quite windy up here I hope the sound quality doesn't suffer but if you're by the sea you're exposed to the wind The Camino is rich in serendipity, that elusive gift of unexpected delights. Serendipity is liberty. 
but it only gifts itself to you if you open yourself up to it. And that requires a leap of faith, a willingness to let go and to allow life to happen organically. Otherwise, we're afforded only fleeting glimpses of its beauty. The Camino dispenses both pleasure and pain in equal measure. A delicate balance of dopamine and discomfort. It's a journey that forces us to confront our inner selves and maybe even to face the pain we may have been avoiding. As Rilke wrote, do not now look for the answers. They cannot now be given to you because you could not live them. The Camino isn't escapism because it doesn't distract you from something painful. On the contrary, it will eventually force you to face the pain or the light. Probably both. I spend my life thinking about the Camino and when I'm on the Camino I spend my time thinking about my life and then again very often I don't think about all that much which feels really good as well Does the Camino provide answers? Or does it force you to ask the right questions? To me, it's mostly the latter. These birds are great. Answers are easy. It's harder to find the right questions. Often here the Camino is the people you meet. And to me that's largely true. It's what makes the Camino so special beyond the actual walk. The friendships you forge can be forever. And you get to know your new friends pretty well fast. You're on an adventure together after all. But who you also meet is you. The most profound encounter is with ourselves. The Camino strips away our defenses, forcing us to confront our true selves, warts and all. Knowing ourselves and all our complexity is a gift that transcends the physical journey. The mind empties of its usual clutter as the body's rhythms take over. The armor of the ego slips away until one is stripped bare before the elements, exposed not just to the sun and wind, but to one's own unvarnished essence. In the end, 
the Camino is a mirror reflecting back our real selves and the cadence of the walk becomes a walking meditation. In this state of bodily struggle and mental calm, the self can no longer hide behind its typical defenses and distractions. We encounter our true nature reflected back at us. Flaws, fears and insecurities rise to the surface. But so too do hidden reserves of strength, resilience and wisdom that may have been obscured by the noise of daily life. It's as if the soul is experiencing a condensed evolution. The Camino's power lies in this distillation of the human experience into its most elemental form, one of brute physicality and profound introspection. It's almost a return to our most primal state as wandering nomads, stripped of some of the trappings of modernity, without the diversions of work, technology or material comforts. We're finally able to confront the most important question. Who am I? Like Paul Weller sings in Cosmos. Who am I? What am I? Where am I to go? The eternal question. It's a pilgrimage not just to a physical destination, but also a voyage of self-discovery, a bit of an odyssey into the depths of our own being. The Camino itself becomes a metaphor for the journey of life with its ups and downs challenges and revelations. The Camino is you. <laughs>